All right, it is 6 p.m. Uh, Mayor Tara Walters is going to be absent today, so we're going to go ahead and get started with the meeting. Call to order. Roll call. Tara Walters. Del Cortis here. Councilmember John Anderson. Here. Councilmember Council Member Kristen Rodriguez. Here. Councilmember Judy Hughes. Councilmember Arthur Neal. Here. Councilmember Johnny Mendoza. Here. All right. If we could stand for a moment of silence and then our Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, next we'll move on to a uh, call to the public. Call to the public for public comment on issues within the jurisdiction of the town council. Council rules limit public comment to three minutes. Individual council members may respond to criticism, criticism made by those commenting, may ask staff to review a matter raised, or may ask that the matter be put on a future agenda. However, members of the council shall not discuss or take action on any matter during an open call to the public unless the matters are properly noticed for discussion on le and legal action. I have uh, one call to the public, Sandra Mitchell. Did I say that right, ma'am? Okay, perfect. Go ahead and come on up. Good evening, Council. My name is Sandra Mitchell. I live at 1098 Southwestern Avenue, Superior, Arizona, 85173. I am here to introduce to you the DEN. The DEN is a youth center for high school students to come and begin preparation for their entry into adulthood. At the DEN, students will learn three basics of importance. They will learn who they are, they will learn what their passion is, and they will learn how to turn their passion into a productive future. A few of the necessities they will learn are decision making, time management, communication, problem solving, teamwork, self-motivation, and perseverance. The DEN is a place where the present meets the future. The DEN is not a place to hang out, play games, or shoot the breeze. The DEN is a place where dreams can be realized and brought to life, goals can be set and accomplished, businesses can become realities, success can become a part of everyday life, and failures will become victories. The DEN is a place where students become determined, empowered, and they learn to never give up. The DEN is not a business, it is an incubator a place where students come to evolve into productive citizens. The DEN will teach students that problems will help them become who they will be. A, prop, a, a place where they will learn truth and righteousness will take them as far as they want to go. I thank you and I look forward to introducing the DEN to you further. Thank you. I love the idea, so excited to hear more information on that. Um, anyone else that would like to speak or is there anybody online? I don't see anybody so we're going to go ahead and call, close call to the public. Item 6A, uh, presentation of the Outstanding Employee Recognition Program Award to Curtis Williams for his outstanding contribution to our organization and celebrates his achievements. Hello, Vice Mayor. I'm very thrilled that we do have the employee of the month, Curtis Williams, with us, and we do have his supervisor. So if you would like to join them 
at, and, and would you like all of the council to go receive their picture? Um, we'll take a picture, and while they're up getting their picture, I'll le read a little bit about what the nominee had to say about our Mr. Williams. Um, the following is what a co-worker worker wrote about Curtis's contributions. Curtis, in my opinion, is the most dedicated and customer-focused employees that I know. His responsibilities consist of working with the grieving families to arrange the final resting places for their loved ones, working with property owners to correct code violations in order to maintain standard of property upkeep throughout the town of Florence, arranging access to the town of Florence dump truck for property owners to perform cleanup. He's, re he's responded to several after hours incidents that I know of, including dragging a dead cow off of Hunt Highway, dealing with a car driven through a wall of an apartment, and helping resolve gravel spilled near the hospital. I know he's kind, he is, he is dealing with families and the most difficult of times. Uh, in short, Curtis treats everyone with kindness and respects why he performs his duties. Thank you, Curtis. Great job. Um, I don't interact with Curtis a lot, but I do know the interactions I have have all been very positive. Um, I do know that you do a very difficult job, and at times are not the are not the face that people want to see knocking on their door. So I appreciate everything that you do, and I'm sure Council feels the same. Um, it is a tough job. Did you want to say anything? Or oh, I'm <laughs> <laughs> he's shy. But I do appreciate, I know how difficult code enforcement and code compliance can be, and Curtis does it very well and follows up on all the issues that come up his way. So uh, we appreciate him and the work he does. Thank you, Curtis. We will ask council to remain where you are. The next item that you have is going to be recognition and congratulations of Maricela Benitez for receiving her master's degree from Arizona State University in emergency management for Homeland Security. And we will invite Maricela up as well as her supervisor. And, and Carby, would you like to say a few words before you go up? You can go right over there if you want to. Thank you, Mr. <clears throat> um, Marcella Benitez uh, has rec recently uh, made a, a major professional accomplishment in her career. She uh, achieved a master's degree in, um, from Arizona State University. Just a little bit of background. Uh, Marcella graduated uh, from NAU in 2018. Uh, shortly thereafter, she started working as a planner with the town of Florence, and she has flourished and done a great job for the community. The last couple of years, she's worked on a master's degree while working full time, and I know from personal experience how much of a commitment and dedication that is to work on a master's degree while you're working full time. So it shows um, a great deal of strong work ethic and commitment and dedication on her part. And we appreciate her. I appreciate her, the department. And, and I think the town is very fortunate to have Marcella as uh, a planner and working for, for the benefit of the community and the department. So thank you, Marcella. And I believe also uh, Marcella's parents and sister in the audience and uh, they've done a great job in uh, raising her. We thank them, too. So, thank you. I just want to thank the town for giving me a chance out of college, being my first job. I would have never expecting it, so it's good that they gave me a chance, and they gave me a chance to get my master's, too. So, I'll stop there. I'm about to cry. <laughs> Well, Mari is a definite asset to the town of Florence, and your parents have done a wonderful job because you are always a pleasure uh, to speak with and to work with. So we are thankful that you are here with us, and we hope that you continue to stay here with us. Anybody else? 
I would just like to add that Mari's a joy to work with. She's always there to provide her input and her kindness whenever we need it. And, and she is a joy to have the team as part of our team. And so not only thank you to Mari, but thank you for the lovely family who raised her and, and have such a, a beautiful daughter to be able to go up and, and come to work for the town of Florence. We appreciate it. Vice Mayor and members of council, I would ask for you to stay put one more time while we bring up the parks and recreation community services and the senior team to come up. And while they're up, headed up that way, I'll go ahead and read the proclamation. We do have to sign a proclamation, though. So if they will start making their way up, September 2022, National Senior Center Month. Whereas older Americans are significant members of our society, investing their wisdom experience to help enrich and strengthen our community, and whereas the Dorothy Nolan Senior Center has acted as a catalyst for mobilizing the creativity, energy, vitality and commitment of the older residents for the town of Florence. Whereas during the pandemic, the Dorothy Nolan Senior Center has been a community partner in ensuring that our most valuable citizens, people aged 65 and older, many underlying medical conditions are cared for and able to stay connected, safe and healthy. Whereas the Dorothy Nolan Senior Center in Florence, Arizona affirms the dignity, self-worth and independence of older persons by facilitating their decisions and actions, tapping into their experiences, skills, and knowledge, and enabling their continued contribution to the community. Now, therefore, be it resolved that, Mar that Tara Walter did hereby proclaim September 2022 National Senior Center Month and calls upon the citizens to recognize the special contributions of the Senior Center participants and their special efforts of the staff and volunteers who work every day to enhance the well-being of older citizens in our community. That is your proclamation. Awesome. Um, I was told that uh, some of you would like to speak. So whoever wants to take it. Hi, I'm Tanya Jaquette, um, coordinator at the Dorothy Nolan Senior Center. And yes, September is um, National Senior Center Day month, sorry. I did wanna say we are um, combine that with a special activity this month, which is Grandparents Day Carnival. And we open that up to all ages, and it's the first time we've done an indoor carnival, and that's going to be this Thursday night and we actually had to stop registration because we had over like 150 people coming. So it's gonna be a huge success. But I did wanna introduce these four. Um, they're wonderful volunteers at the center and they're the reason we make everything happen and they wanted to talk about how important the center is to them. This is Debbie and Larry Stevens. And if you haven't seen our new sign at the Senior Center, please drive by and see it. Larry built it himself and designed it himself, and he did a wonderful job. And I'll turn it over to Debbie for okay. a second. <laughs> for a very short okay. second, no. My name's Debbie Stevens, and uh, I've been coming to the Senior Center probably a little over four years. And it's really, I just had a blast. Uh, I do volunteer twice a week. Well, sometimes a little more. But anyway, um, biscuits and gravy on Wednesday morning, folks. Just so you know. And yes, and $2. <laughs> and, uh, and on Fridays uh, for lunch. And of course, we cook our own uh, uh, lunch on that day. But anyway, I just want to say that it, it's really been a real pleasure working with Tanya and Rhoda and Tammy. Uh, I, I couldn't ask for nicer people to be associated with. Thank you. Turn it over to my husband, Larry. <laughs> I'm Larry Stevens. Uh, the Senior Center means a lot to me. I, re I really enjoy it. I do a little work for them now and then, but it's, uh, <laughs> yeah. 
we have a lot of fun. We've got a lot of activities, games, and everything, you know, and it's, it's real good. He's the reason why I have a lollipop tree in my office for the carnival. He <laughs> built me a lollipop tree. You have to stop. And here, this is Leo Hugo. And during COVID, we were trying to come up with activities. And he built me nine fairy houses. They were like little bird houses that we could hide throughout town with a map. And he did it in a week, got them up, and they hidden throughout town, and everybody found them. So anything I need built, I go to these two, and they're just awesome. Here you go, Leo. Thank you, thank you. Well, I tell you, I felt a real honor when Tony asked if I would say a few words about what the senior means to me. What happened was, about 30 years ago, I came to Arizona as a bird, ended up in Caliente, which is a nice place, and a few years back, about four, I found myself without a wife, and I couldn't drive, I had a drunk eye, and I didn't know what to do. And some people think, when you get to be over 80, you have a choice of three nursing home, senior center, or live with your kids. And I, I wasn't ready for none of that. But my daughter called and said, Dad, we need to talk. So she came and we talked and she went down to get her hair fixed down town here and got to talking with uh, Suzanne. And Suzanne said, well, get your dad over to the senior center and they'll take care of him. Sure enough, Four years ago I started, I'd get up every morning, take a shower, cook breakfast, I'm ready to go. And I've been a real helping. They take you out on the activities, pick you up for meals, and during the covert, they made sure you had a meal a day, and then it, when it hit with no toilet paper, and I was looking for the Sears catalog, every now and then some toilet paper would appear out on my back, what nice people. Anyway, thanks a lot. This is my friend Jennifer, right here. Oh, thanks. I'm Jennifer Craig, and I also volunteer at the center. Um, in fact, I'm a second generation volunteer. My mother volunteered for years until she couldn't stand alone anymore <clears throat> and needed uh, the uh, walker, but she couldn't very well do things in the kitchen without that. So I now am in the kitchen. And I also love coming because of the seniors. Uh, I'm a senior myself, but for those ladies that come, they're just a joy to talk to. They're fun to make up stories with, and we always find a way to continue bringing them in and having a good time with them. I think it perks them up besides ourselves, so that's what and I think that's basically what the Senior Center really wants to do with them. Find places for them in the community, within the people themselves, if they can't get out themselves. So we thank also for the transportation that gets them there and the transportation medically you can sign up for, which I had to do recently. So uh, thank you and pass it on. <laughs> Perfect. I love listening to everybody's reason why they love the um, Senior Center. I know for us it's, it's a testament to the spirit of Florence. So we thank you for all your contributions and uh, giving everybody a purpose. Thank you. Vice Mayor, as you go on stage, we'll move on to item D as council goes up on stage and we will invite Alicia Murrell, I'm gonna, Alicia up to the stage to do a presentation on upcoming Town of Florence special events. I think it's still on. Marissa. 
Alicia Marufo. Good evening, Council. Thank you for allowing me to come and present our up and coming fall events. Uh, during this presentation, we will be showing you all fall events and external events happening in Florence. October, we will start off our spooky season with a frightful movie in the park and drive in. This will be an interactive movie night where scares will greet you as you drive in. Come Play is a PG-13 movie, and viewer's discretion is advised. Florence Makes a Difference Day will include various projects throughout the community in hopes of impacting the community in a positive and effective way. Fright Fest will offer trunk or treating, vendors, and a, cost a cost costume contest. November will bring the 90th annual Junior Parada Parade down historic Main Street. This parade celebrates the town's Western heritage and showcases numerous writers and a variety of floats. December is when Florence becomes a holiday destination. Hometown Holiday Parade is where families can come out and enjoy music, snow, vendors, and an amazing light parade. Jingle Bell Jog is a fun way to get your steps or run in. The time has been changed to the evening where participants can see downtown's charm during this holiday season. Movie in the Park and Drive-In will be the all-time classic Home Alone. Breakfast with Santa is the best time to bring the kids and enjoy some crafts, pancakes, and pictures with good old Saint Nick. Santa will be cruising the streets of Florence before heading back to the North Pole to get ready for his big day. External events happening in Florence. Florence Chambers of Commerce has a lot coming this fall. Chamber Mixers, Farmer's Market, Third Friday, Veterans Day Celebration, and Second Chance Prom are just a, to name a few of them. Pinal County Historic Museum will be offering their Day of the Dead, Frank Talk, and AZ Speaks. Historic Florence Foundation will host sheep and calf riding, Volkswagen Roundup, the 90th annual Florence Junior Parada Rodeo, and Junior Bull Riding. Other external events to keep an eye out for are Florence Anthem Triathlon and Fall Carnival. FUSD Pitmaster Ch Challenge date was recently changed and will be held in conjunction with the Volkswagen Roundup event. Arizona Run for the Fallen and Gilbert Day Pony Express. Please make sure to visit discoverflorenceaz.com for times and more information regarding any, any of these events. Thank you and we hope to see you for all the fun in Florence. Can I answer any questions? Thank you. Sounds very exciting. Does anyone on council have any questions or comments? No? Thank you. Thank you. All right. Next, we're going to move to item seven, consent agenda. All items on the consent agenda will be handled by a single vote as part of the consent agenda unless a council member or a member of the public at the time the agenda item is called. A, accept a sidewalk easement within the Circle K at Anthem property. B, approval to grant a trail easement on the Town of Florence Fire Station number two parcel to Anthem Parkside at Merrill Ranch Community Association, Inc. C, accept the register of demands ending July 31st, 2022 in the amount of $6,532,938.05. D, approval of the June 20th, June 27th, and July 5th, 2022 Town Council meeting minutes. 
and E, receive and file the Community Service Advisory Board meeting minutes of June 9th, 2022. Does anyone on council or the public have any items they would like removed? With that, I need a motion. Make a motion to accept the consent agenda as read. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? All right. Item eight, new business. A, discussion approval, disapproval to adopt resolution number 1836-22 a re resolution of the Town of Florence, Pinal County, Arizona, approving and amending final plat for Western Crossings Phase 1 and authorizing execution by the Town Manager of Supporting Documents. Mar Mari Sala. Madam Vice Mayor, members of the council, tonight we have an amended final plat for the phase one of Western Crossings. Currently, Western Crossings phase one already has an approved final plat that was brought to council and approved in 2006. However, the current owners and developers are looking to add some simple changes to that final plat. This phase one includes 130 lots, and the town has issued an at-risk grading permit for it as of now. The developer is, con is proceeding with that. These changes to the final plot include landscaping tracks along Centennial Park Avenue, Mul Mulberry Street, and Vista Avenue. There is also a change in the side setbacks for each lot. Originally, it was three feet on one side and nine feet on the other. This was changed to make inspections easier and in also for fire safety as it still meets those requirements. Now the change will be from three feet and nine feet to six feet and six feet, which is generally something you see in current neighborhoods all over Arizona. No changes will be made to the number of lots, the placement of lots, the lot sizes, or to the street layout. So these are just simple, more aesthetic changes. So here is the original Western Crossing. It's, it's vertical, so don't think it's supposed to be side to side, it's vertical. Um, so that's what it looked like now. And the blue highlights where the changes will be made, these tracks, these little side tracks. And that is the only change that's really going to be made. Now staff recommends approval of these amendments to the final plot for Western Crossings phase one. It helps to improve the appearance of the streetscapes and to provide more appropriate set side setbacks for each lot. And with that, the applicant is here to answer any questions. Um, with that, you can, if you have any questions, you can go ahead. Okay, thank you. Does anyone on council have any questions or comments? Okay, I don't see any questions or comments from council, so with that, I need a motion. Make a motion to approve and adopt resolution 1836-22. Second. Have a motion and a second. All in favor would say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. And with that, it passes. Thank you. Thank you. All right, item seven, uh, 8B, discussion approval, disapproval to enter into an intergovernmental agreement with Pinal County, City of Apache Junction, and the Town of Florence to support the development of the Central Arizona Project National Recreational Trail. Allison Feliz, please. Good evening, Vice Mayor and Council. The town has been working with Pinal County and the City of Apache Junction in planning for a future recreational trail alongside the Central Arizona Project Canal, also known as CAP, since 2015, if not earlier. The idea of having a recreational trail along the 336-mile CAP corridor dates to the initial planning and design of the CAP project. The original plans for the canal, as developed by the United States Department of the Interior Bureau of Reclamation, recognized the benefits of the parallel trail and specifically identified low-impact recreational trails as an auxiliary use for the corridor. 
A specific alignment for the trail continues to be a, a key element of the overall project. The Town of Florence segment of this trail will be approximately 5.19 miles long with potentially two trailheads. The CAP will allow for recreational use by bicycles, pedestrians, and equestrian enthusiasts. The trail in most areas will be on the current CAP maintenance road and the majority of the construction costs associated with the project is dedicated to fencing. We do not currently have an anticipated completion date for this project. The county is taking the lead in the coordination of the project and the town will only be responsible for areas of the project that fall within the town of Florence limits. Funding has been identified in the CIP. And I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Allison. Does anyone on council have any questions or comments? Nope, I see no questions or comments. With that, I need a motion. Make it a motion to approve entering into an intergovernmental agreement with Pinal County, City of Apache Junction, and the Town of Florence to support the development of the Central Arizona Project National Recreational Trail. I have a motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. With that, we have a pass. Item C, discussion approval, disapproval of the Charles Whitlow Rodeo Grounds to remain at its current location, 11608 AZ. I'm sorry, Siri, I was not speaking to you, but thank you for your input. Um, location at 11608 AZ 79, Florence, Arizona, 85132, Allison. Vice Mayor and Council, at the last Council meeting, um, it was recommended that we bring back the site location for the Charles Whitlow Rodeo Grounds. Um, the Historic Florence Foundation and staff met the Thursday following that meeting, and the Foundation um, has hosted several successful events at the current location and would highly recommend and would like to stay at the current location that it's at now. A couple of the items of concern um, that we took from the last meeting was that the BLM property and that they will never assist with the build out of the grounds, neither physically or financially. The BLM R and PP Act authorizes the sale and lease of the public lands for recreational purposes to state and local governments and to qualified nonprofit organizations. Um, although BLM cannot contribute or will not contribute to the rodeo grounds physically or financially, their contribution by allowing the town to have the patent for public lands upholds their end of the partnership. Another concern was the location of the current site and the idea that a future site can never, I'm sorry, a f that a future site can have a closer proximity to the downtown, um, having a greater op opportunity for economic impact. Uh, the Historic Florence Foundation has several ideas in mind to enhance the economic impact. Um, some of that includes signage as well as uh, I think they had said that the last couple of events that they had, there was several people who were utilizing Uber Eats, so trying to get some of the restaurants on board with Uber Eats as well as several other ideas. The foundation is here tonight as well if you guys would like to ask any questions to them. All right, and with that, I'll open it up for discussion. Anyone, uh, council members, with questions or comments? Uh, council Member Anderson? I, I think I got this answered at the last meeting but we resolved the water problem, didn't we? We are still working to resolve that problem. We have met with people and we plan to be bringing that forward very soon. Thank you. Anyone else? Oh. Council Member Rodriguez. And so for me, um, like you stated, the, the BLM allows us to use the patent for the land, but as far as us seeking a partnership in the actual facility, if we were to build it out to a grander scale, they would, would they allow that on the property for us to have a, say a business, a full-fledged business, be a partner in um, the actual build out? Would that be an option? Because my understanding is that that would not be an option. Council Member Rodriguez, um, they, it is not for commercial use and currently the city of Apache Junction would be in there um, actually purchasing some land from BLM so there are different options um, if we wanted to explore that down the road but it is not for commercial use 
Yeah, and I understand that it'd be for recreational use, but I'm saying the partnership in building that recreational facility um, would be with multiple businesses or with some type of um, larger facility. That's I've typically seen with some of the other rodeo grounds is that they take in a partnership um, for signage and advertisement, which my understanding is they could put signage there to an extent, but as far as a financial contribution on the land, that would be the hindrance. So there's a difference in discussion and one of the discussion points is that the um, foundation who we've entered into a contract with can have a business model. And in their business model, they are allowed to bring in other people to be able to sponsor and do things within their business model to be able to add improvements to the property. So um, it very much depends on how we're looking at it, what scale we're talking about, and what the business model, and that's where the partnership comes back, because the Town of Florence staff, the council, and the foundation will be working towards the improvements that are coming forward, and they'll be sharing their business model with us to tell us how, how this visioning is going to happen and who's going to be part of their visioning and part of their business model. So while we have some areas that we can partnership to make sure that we're able to get people to put up their banners to support their business and to contribute to the programs that, that is included in their business model. We're not looking at having a, a business where we're going to um, enter into a contract to be able to sell naming rights or something like that. It's very much going to be the Charles Whitlow rodeo ground. Mm -hmm. And as we go back in with any type of contributions, it'll be working with the foundation as part of their business model at this time. Okay. And the water issues, I apologize. Can you fill us in on that? I know obviously we had this discussion about temporary um, costs, but the well costs overall to upgrade that um, current well situation? We had some interesting meetings that will allow for us to move forward to soliciting a bid and at that time we'll be able to come to council and the bids that we are expecting to receive are significantly less that was reported in prior work sessions. Um, so the staff is very thrilled to be able to work through the process with the foundation. And as soon as we get those bids in, we'll be bringing those back to council. We just want to make sure before we say anything that we put it out, that the bids come back in, that it's a fair bidding process to make sure that what we're doing. And they're planning on cleaning out the current well, resleeving the current well, and being able to utilize that with a tank. That is what we're currently looking at bidding at this time. Anyone else? No. Did you have another one? No. Nope, you're good? Yeah. All right, I don't see any more. Oh, sorry, Mr. Mendoza. Um, I don't know, I'm confused with this agenda item because I believe that at one time we asked what options we had and I'd never seen options. Um, and then all of a sudden, we're making recommendations to keep it at its current site without due process in, in my eyes. <laughs> I, I will say that uh, under a previous administration, the council did request for uh, the facility to be looked into um, and to get suitable sites to be able to move that. A suitable site was never found so that we could not consider the cost of real estate versus the cost of improvements. And at the same time, while we're working with the foundation, the foundation has stated that that is the site that they, the current site is the site that they would like to see it move forward. The reason why the town of Florence has not moved forward with planning improvements, we've, this will be our second junior parada that we will have the foundation put on for us without the water improvements being installed. Why? Because we have yet to make a determination on the location, which means that we haven't put taxpayer dollars into the location. <coughs> so it's, it's, it's for the next 10 years that we are in the contract with the foundation, we would be looking at the site being the current site. If in five years or six years council wanted to 
pivot and move to a new location, that would give us enough time to be able to start looking at how that is going to work. But right now we're at a catch 22. We're not spending any money to improve the site because council hasn't dedicated and named the site. Um, and we continue to have our rodeos there and say we don't wanna lose our traditions of our junior parada. So in order to spend that money, we are requesting council be able to state that that will be the site that we will use at least while we're in this um, agreement. And if council and the foundation while we're working together selects another site to move forward, we can do that as a team working together. But in order to spend the money that we want to be able to provide the improvements to get the water solution in place, we do need to have a site be designated. I'm in line with, you know, sorry, Johnny, we're done. I apologize. Okay. Um, I'm in line with what Johnny said. I feel like we're not doing our due diligence here. We already agreed to cover the water expenses until the water solution is completely rectified. So I'm failing to see why we would not do our due diligence. And when we have a recommendation, but we haven't fully executed all the numbers that we've asked for, I'm really struggling with getting on board with just signing off on stating there when we're gonna be putting in these permanent or semi-permanent semi solutions for the water that ultimately if five years we decide to up and move, we've just wasted that taxpayer dollar. I will tell you that in the proposals and in what we are looking at, it's very significantly a different story. Again, it has not gone out to bid. So until we get those bids in, if you would like us to hold this item until we bring that bid back for a water solution, we can do that. But I very much think that we should progress with the water solution. Johnny, did you have some more you wanted? No? Can, um, I guess for me, I would like to hear from, um, from our partner, and I, I apologize for putting you on the spot, but I, I trust in my heart that you're going to be able to um, give us an answer to this, um, given your expertise in this field um, and all of us lacking this expertise. If you were to think of any other site in the town of Florence, can you think of another site that would be viable and that um, you would you would support moving the rodeo grounds to, um, knowing that you know where it's at now has been where it's been for a very long time? But that seems to be the the conversation that we all keep having, and that's what we kept asking for uh, was: Are there other locations that this site would work? And if if you as the expert in this and the person who's facilitating these um, events and is our partner who has signed on for 10 years, if you have an opinion, I'd love to hear it. Well, I think I've, I've spoken to this before, but um, Vice Mayor, Council, thank you for the opportunity. Um, I don't know what properties the town of Florence may obtain, have, that they could possibly move this rodeo grounds to. Um, looking at the master plan that was done in 2007, just, just to do a, a build out in 2007, I think the price tag was $13.9 million. Uh, that was to renovate the, where the property is today. Now understand none of that ever happened. And I don't know that there's ever been anywhere near that amount of money put into that facility, nor do I believe that the facility is gonna require that much money in order to maintain a safe and adequate facility for us to hold events throughout the year, especially rodeo events. Um, as in our proposal, it was stated that the facility as it is at the end of life, understandable. Um, but you know, we, we came together to say we are up for the challenge and, and to help the town renew the location just so that we can continually continue to hold these rodeos and to keep the of course the tradition of the parada alive but not only that but to start increasing the amount of events that are happening in our communities um, so it would be really hard for me um, I'll ask my team here if, if they have any suggestions but other than 
I, I don't know what properties the town owns. I know during the work session there was a discussion about some properties and as that moved forward, properties weren't available, et cetera. So um, I'm not in the know on, on that, so. Well, yeah, we, we I, I mean, we strongly believe that just for the sheer history of where the location is at, people know where the rodeo grounds is in Florence. Um, it's no surprise. And it's been there for over 50 plus years at that location. Um, it's a great location. It's over 100 acres. Uh, I don't know that the town has 100 acres, you know, outside of the uh, community areas that, you know, you would actually want to start establishing, you know, horse stalls and, and creating dust and, and noise and lights. And, I mean, there's a lot to it. Not only that, you have livestock. So, you know, we have to look at the, at the requirements to, to house livestock, uh, you know, the rodeo grounds is far enough away from town that I don't know that anybody complains about those issues. And I, I think as it moves closer to town, closer to the communities, those issues may come up. And it's not unlike a, many dairies in the Chandler Queen Creek area that have gotten forced out, that have been forced out of town because people have built housing developments around them. Seeing the development that's happening in Florence right now, it, it, it would appear to me that at some point that rodeo grounds is not going to be out of town very long. And um, to me, 10 years is not a long time, especially when back in 2007, this big grandiose idea of, you know, redoing that facility and, and adding everything that has been discussed over several years, you know, none of it's ever happened. To whatever reason of that, that it really doesn't matter to us, but we're here to make we're here to make th this happen. We're here to to put our hard work and effort into making the facility safer and bringing more events to this town. Thank you. Yeah. Any other statements? Anybody? Go ahead, council member. So, did you have more to add? No. Okay. Pardon. Um, so when I'm thinking back on the proposal that we had when we had talked about building it out, there was other things that we had requested in that or the, the bigger dream of it, um, including camping, possibly using it for other sources, having water hookups, things of that nature. Would we be able to facilitate all of those things on the current site or is that going to impede on our patent? Those items are currently part of the patent that is on file with BLM. Go ahead, uh, uh, Council Member Anderson. Speaker on, okay. Uh, you know, when this all started, I was for finding a new location. But after hearing all the pros and cons, I think we're better off staying where we are. And uh, what we heard about redoing the well, uh, that was, I don't know if you remember, but it was like $14,000 to redo the well, the big expense is going to be a, some kind of a tank to put in there, right? And I think we're working on that, so I'm pleased with staying where we are. Originally, it was going to cost us over a million dollars to redo the well. That's right. Yeah. <clears throat> yep. Councilmember New. I've been from the beginning. When he said it first off, I'm happy where it is. Happy where it is. Leave it alone, it's happy. All right, thank you. Thank you. All right, with that, I need a motion. I'll make a motion to leave the rodeo grounds right where it is. Second. With that, I have a motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Aye. With that, it passes. All right, and next we have uh, item number nine, manager's report.
we'd still need to do item number 8D, and this is then a council member to be appointed to the Rodeo Grounds Advisory Board. Oh, sorry, I wrote my notes on the wrong line. All right, so item number D, discussion approval, disapproval to appoint a member of council to the Charles Whitlow Rodeo Grounds Advisory Board. Allison. Vice Mayor and Council. We're asking for a council member to um, be appointed for the Charles Whitlow Rodeo Grounds Advisory Board. Uh, the advisory board will meet the fourth Thursday of every month at the community center at six o'clock. Um, in the advisory board, we will have the concessionaire or concessionaire appoint, member of the community services advisory board, member of council, and two members at large in, involved in rodeo activities or events. Okay, and repeat the date, the date and time again. Fourth Thursday of every month at the community center at six o'clock. Okay, I would, for me, I would just like to um, ask who would like to serve on that? I would. Anybody else? All right, if we could uh, get a vote on having council member Neil serve on the uh, Charles Whitlow Rodeo Grounds Advisory Board. All in favor? So move. No. Motion, sorry. <laughs> we have to approve the motion first. Can I get a motion? So move. Second. <laughs> All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? And with that, we have an approval. Hey, this is like my first time doing a whole meeting, so I think I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> Number nine, manager's report. Well, do, do we want to make a motion to approve Neil? Vice Mayor, members of council, I just want to say that we are just returning from the League of Arizona Cities and Towns. As of always, it was an informative week with a lot of learning taking place. I'm so grateful to those municipalities that were willing to do sessions and share their knowledge with us. And hopefully you'll see lots of new ideas coming from members of the council and our team um, based on those sessions. With that, I would just say, if you have any questions, we do have a long executive session. So I will end it there for time's sake. All right, thank you. And uh, department reports. Any council member have any questions for our departments? No, perfect. All right, and then our last call to the public. Uh, I have no papers, so if anybody in the audience or online has anything they would like to say, please let us know now. All right, closing call to the public. Uh, item 12, call to the council, current events only. And I will start with Council Member Mendoza. I don't have anything. Councilmember Rodriguez? I have nothing tonight, thank you. Perfect. Councilmember Neal? I have nothing, thank you. Okay. Councilmember Anderson? Uh, yes, I want to talk about banners. We've had quite a uh, deal going on about our banners, and I, I would just like to suggest that we really haven't defined what the purpose of our banners are, and uh, so I think we need to decide whether we want to promote the town or are we going to promote businesses in the town. And I really have a problem with us promoting businesses in the town on the town banners. I don't know if that's in violation of the gift clause or not, but uh, I would rather see us just promote events that the town sponsors on these banners. Because I don't think we should be putting our logo on an ad for anybody in town. I mean, I, I want to support our businesses, but I think that's what the chamber does for us, is advertise for the businesses. And if the chamber wants to put up banners, I would support that. But I just don't think that the, the town should be uh, putting up banners with, uh, you know, the names of businesses on them. That's just my opinion. Thank you. All right, um, 
my understanding of the banners is that those businesses have paid to be on that banner. That's how I understood it. So we're, it's a paid advertisement yeah. um, to be that banner. So we're, we're not paying any money for it, the, the businesses. But we shouldn't be an advertising agency. Oh, it's stuck. And, okay. No, it's just my opinion. Yeah, because yeah, I, yeah. You know, we have small businesses that can't afford mm -hmm. to pay that. And so, you know. We're not advertising for, for them, we're advertising for the people who could afford to advertise. I just have a problem with that. Lisa, if we could discuss that at a later time. Okay. Um, and then for me, I um, had a great time at the league. It, it's always fun. Um, I try to walk away with something from it, and I felt like this time I walked away with the most than I have any other league. Um, and I don't know if it's just because we're all getting back into the swing of things or what, but I did walk away with meeting some great partners that I hope to um, bring before the town to discuss some things, including uh, grants to help homeowners with um, expenses and things like that. That was a great thing to hear about and grant money that's just kind of not getting utilized because they're having a hard time getting the word out. So we're hoping that uh, we can partner and maybe get some of that out. Um, some different partnerships that I know Lisa and I discussed with other uh, members that were there. Always a great time, great time to see the other cities and get to um, talk to people that you only get to see once a year and see how things are going in their town and see how everybody is, is prospering and um, meeting their challenges head on. So that was great. Uh, the school district, FUSD, has started their penny drive. So if you have any spare change, please drop that off at one of the schools. Um, if you've got kids, send it with them because they probably have some competition going on between the kids, I'm not sure. Um, but that change makes a huge difference and it adds up really quick and uh, every penny adds up and before you know it, they've, they've got several thousand dollars and they put it to good use. Um, other than that, we have a lot of events. We're getting ready, as we saw tonight, to get kicked into our full swing of fall and winter events and that is when our town is the busiest. So I look forward to those events and hope to see everybody there. And other than that, I just want to thank everybody for their um, time tonight and uh, working through this with me <laughs> because this is the first time I've done an entire meeting. So um, other than that, we are going to adjourn to uh, Merrill Ranch Community Facilities District Number 1. Make a uh, motion to adjourn to Merrill Ranch Community Facilities Number 1. Second. Uh, I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. All right. Vice Mayor, I've just conducted your silent roll call. You may proceed to adoption of the minutes. All right. Uh, item C, discussion and possible action to approve Merrill Ranch Community Fil Facilities District Number 1, July 5th, 2022, special meeting minutes. So move. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. All right, with that we have a motion. Um, item 14. Make a, a motion. Go ahead. Make a motion to adjourn to a joint executive session between the town of the Florence Town Council and the Merrill Ranch Community Facilities District Number One. Second. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. With that, we have a motion. Yeah. We're going to executive session. <laughs>